So the first thing I'm going to talk about is where is Hawaii? Some people, they were asking, oh, is Hawaii, you know, they think Hawaii is not a US. So there is a reason for that. Some people, they think it is not part of the US, but it is part of the US because Hawaii is very far. So if you can see here uh, on the map, so Hawaii is actually located uh, in the central uh, Pacific Ocean. So Southwest of uh, the US and then Southeast of Japan. So here is, if you can see here is Japan, yeah, here's Asia and this is Australia and this is the US. So it is actually far away uh, from the main, they, they call the US the mainland, you know, and when you're in Hawaii, they talk about the mainland, which is the US. So the size of Hawaii is the 2000, uh, so, okay, so, so Hawaii joined the US in 1959. So it was actually the last state to join the US. So it is like not very far, uh, like 50 years ago, 60, 40 years ago. Um, and here you can, you know, have some information about how far it is. So it's like 2,390 miles from California, 3,850 3, 3, miles from Japan and 4,900 miles from China. So one, you, you know, one fun thing about like, fun fact about Hawaii is, uh, is that uh, it's the most isolated population uh, center on earth. So people from Hawaii, they are isolated. So that's why sometimes they had uh, like unique character at the same time, they don't want to bring things to the, to Hawaii. So if you're coming from a different place, they are, they, uh, you cannot get things inside Hawaii, they're afraid of diseases, like people bring with them some diseases, so they don't want to infect the, um, the native people there. Uh, so, so the state of Hawaii consists of eight main lands. So it's not only one land, we have eight main, main lands. And uh, um, yeah, I need to minimize this. Uh, so uh, the lands are uh, Nihau, uh, Kauai, Oahu, Maui, Molokai, Lanakai, uh, Lanai, uh, Kahulawe, and the big island of Hawaii. So Hawaii is the most isolated population center on the face of the earth and is, only, is, is the only state that grows coffee. So in the US, the only state that grows coffee is actually Hawaii. And here like a quick uh, view of the map from like, so this is this so we me and my family we went and visit Hawaii last uh, Christmas and we went to Honolulu so this is like uh, uh, Oahu the island of Oahu and this is where we stayed like in Honolulu but they have like the main big one and then the other little ones they the rest of them so something about the history of Hawaii. So it is one of the four states that were independent prior to becoming a part of the US. The other states, they were just like, uh, you know, inherited by the Native Americans, but uh, Hawaii had actually, it was a kingdom. So, and then they joined the US. Uh, Captain James Hook, uh, he was among the first European explorer that discovered the islands in 1778. So it was discovered in 1778 and he called the islands Sandwich Islands. And, uh, but the king, um, uh, King uh, Kamehameha, Kamehameha uh, the first, he united the islands under his rule as the Kingdom of Hawaii. Go to the next slide. Um, uh, Pearl Harbor is some of the you know important incidents happened. It's very sad, but it is some of the important uh, uh, in, in history. So Pearl Harbor is a U.S. Uh, naval base uh, near Honolulu, Hawaii. That was the scene of uh, devastating uh, surprise attack by Japan by Japanese force on December seventh, nineteen forty one. So we went to the to Pearl Harbor. We visited. I have some photos uh, that it was really very, uh, very sad because 
they destroyed uh, nearly 20 American naval vessels, including eight uh, battleships and uh, over 300 airplanes. So more than 2,400 Americans died in the attack, including civilians, and another like 1,000 people were wounded. So the day after the assault, President um, Franklin Roosevelt asked the Congress to declare war on Japan. And this is like later we will see the effect of uh, Pearl Harbor attack. So uh, here is the, like this is where we went. We, we went on a ferry and they built this kind of memorial on the top of a ship. So they have so many ships, they uh, sank. I think this is like ship Arizona. So when the ship sank, uh, they, they have it under the water and they built this memorial so you can go and see, you know, the ship from above. But yeah, it's very uh, sad here, like USS uh, Arizona BB-39. So from that memorial, you can see the beginning of the ship and you can, this is another photo. This is like how we see it. So this is the ferry. So people can go and visit, and this is the ship, like, you know, so from, from beginning to end, so you walk and then you can see underneath, because, you know, people could not, like people died in, un, in under the water. So that was a very uh, sad, tragic event. And they had a museum we went to. And this is interesting uh, statue. So this is the lonely sailor, which is, you know, uh, when you go to Pearl Harbor, you, they have it uh, in the garden, and it is made uh, out of the wreck of the, the ships. So, you know, they melted some of the uh, metals of the ships, the wreck, and then they built this uh, statue too, like as, as, as to remember. So interesting facts about Hawaii. So Hawaii's tallest mountain, Maui, okay. Uh, uh, Hawaii's tallest mountain, uh, Mauna Kea, stands at uh, 13,796 uh, feet and is taller than Mount Everest. It follows from the base of the mountain on the floor of the Pacific Ocean. So that is, you know, we all the time think uh, Mount Everest is the tallest. So we have, so if you'd like to go to the, um, you know, a taller one, here you go, you have to go to Hawaii. Uh, there are only 12 letters in the Hawaiian alphabet. So the vowels A, E, I, O, U, and constants H, K, L, M, N, P, W. So this is like uh, the alphabet of the of Hawaiian language. So that's why like sometimes there's not much variety when they talk, but it's very beautiful language, but there are not that many letters. Aloha in Hawaiian uh, means uh, both hello and goodbye. And this is like sometimes they call, uh, or it's famous like uh, to be called uh, Aloha State. So when you go, you said Aloha, like as high when you finish, you know, when you are going saying goodbye, you said Aloha. So uh, it's very beautiful, like uh, uh, sound. Uh, because of its uh, continuous uh, volcanic uh, eruptions, Hawaii is the only state in the nation to have increasing land area. So every time they have uh, eruption, you know, after the eruption, the land will increase, so they will have more land. So very interesting. The oldest Catholic uh, cathedral in the United States is uh, the Cathedral Our Lady of Peace in Honolulu. It was built in 1843. So although, you know, it was isolated and as we said, like it is uh, the uh, the recently like to be joined to to join the U.S., but uh, uh, it has the oldest uh, Catholic uh, church. Uh, so they have uh, only uh, two types of uh, this type one, two types of uh, mammals are native to Hawaii: uh, the horay bat and the monk. So horay bank and the monk. See, here is the hooray. Uh, photo of the hooray bat. So this is the bat. So this is like very native to Hawaii. And the other mammal native to Hawaii is the uh, beautiful, cute, okay. 
monksy. So he looks like a monk. Yeah, he's welcoming you to Hawaii. And this is like, you know, I'm drawing. So you can see like, this is, it looks like real. This is how it looks like when you go to Hawaii, the, the view. The popular dance uh, uh, form hula was originated a form of worship performed by highly trained men. So if you can, if you ever heard of the hula dance, usually you see that the women are dancing, but usually it was actually performed by men. It, it was like a religious thing. So today hula is performed all over, the, uh, all over Hawaii for worship and to entertain tourists and is performed by women. So when we were there, it was very interesting. Like we went to a, a performance and it was performed by this, those little girls. And it was very interesting. Those are older, like one, two, three, they were older. But then the other ones, they were trying to, you know, have uh, to practice. So it was very cute. And if you want, uh, just because of the internet connection, we are not going to have a lot of videos. But if you can Google like hula dance and you can hear like how it sounds and so it's very peaceful, it's very nice, it's all about like gratitude and happiness and there's a lot of nice uh, spirits, you know, of the uh, population there, like they're enjoying their time and they express, you know, their uh, gratitude by the hula dance. The weather in Hawaii is all the time nice. I think it's hot and humid in the summer, but with the, with the ocean, there's all the time nice breeze. And when we were there Christmas, this is a Christmas, but everybody is in summer clothes. So we were, we were swimming actually during the Christmas there. So it's all the time a beautiful weather there. So this is, you know, the king's uh, statue. So this is like, it's made of brass, but it's like, it, you know, it symbolized like he was very rich because it was a very rich kingdom, like with the gold. And this is one of the one, uh, this is like in the main, uh, uh, some photos that we took while we are in the city center. So this is in the city center. And this is how they had the Christmas uh, tree decorated, like music and, you know, notes and guitar. So it was Christmas, it was summer, but they wanted still to celebrate Christmas. So like most of these photos, like those, we, we, we've taken them. So there is like a Hanauma Bay. It's very interesting natural preserve. So we, we went there and this is how it looked. Like it is like a little uh, gulf. The water is very nice and warm. And there are a lot of, like you do snorkeling and you can see, uh, different kinds of fish, a lot of uh, interesting uh, sea animals. So you are not actually allowed to step on, uh, so you have to be swimming. You, can, you shouldn't step because you may hurt the animals or the plants. So it was very nice uh, experience. And uh, this is a closer photo. So you can see how the people are like, this is what I just did. This is like early in the morning at eight o'clock, you know, and you had all these people because they're trying to come early so they can see more fish before it gets crowded because it gets very crowded. But again, they try to preserve it. You know, you have to pay a fee and, you know, to get in and you have to be very careful about what you do. You cannot take shells, you cannot. So they try to protect uh, nature very much, but it was very nice uh, experience. And uh, one of the things we visited there is the dole plantation. So if you like uh, pineapples, probably you saw, you've seen like the pineapples in the can coming from dole. So they uh, export it to all over the world. This is a very huge uh, plantation. It was nice experience. We learned a lot about it. And here are some like the history of the pineapple. So the pineapple, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, given its English name from the resemblance of a pine cone. So the pine, and then they said like pineapple because it's sweet from inside, so they call it pineapple. And Christopher Columbus brought uh, the, uh, the na uh, this native uh, of South American back to Europe as one of the exotic prices of the new world. So he brought it back to Europe, pineapple. And then later, uh, in later centuries, the sailors brought the pineapples home to New England where a fresh pineapple displayed on a Porsche so it has a symbol, like it means that the, the sailor is home from a foreign 
uh, ports and ready to welcome visitors. So no one knows when the first pineapple uh, or foreign fruit in Hawaii arrived, but uh, Francisco de Paula Marine, uh, a Spanish adventurer who became a trusted advisor to King uh, Kamehameha the Great, uh, successfully raised pineapples in the early 1800s. So in early 1800s, they started to plant pineapples in Hawaii and then became uh, a big uh, industry. Uh, so a sailor, Captain John uh, Kidwell, uh, is uh, credited with founding Hawaii's pineapples industry, importing and testing a number of varieties uh, in the 1800s for commercial uh, crop uh, potential. It wasn't until James and Drummond Dole, the founder of Dole Plantation, he arrived in the islands and he transformed, you know, the, you know, so, so the, like he transformed into uh, business, but uh, it was an American symbol of friendship and exotic lo uh, locals. So he had it to be uh, even like more popular and he exported all over, to all over the world. And here are some photos, like this is all in the plantation, very creative. And when we were there, actually, they were selling all this pineapple. So we walked, and this is a photo of my daughter she took. And I never thought to see the pineapples, you know, planted like this. I thought I would get from a tree. So actually, it's not in the tree, it's on the ground. And, you know, very interesting, like here is another one. So we, we got one of these, like each of us got one of these. It was a huge, you know, it was like, I, we thought it would be, you know, easy to finish. It was so sweet and we were surprised it didn't have any sugar added. It was just natural pineapples. So it was delicious. And even the ice cream, they make it from natural pineapples and they said no sugar added, but it was very sweet. Yeah, and the dish was here. Uh, here's another photo. So there you can take a cruise, like you can take a ride. So this is a trolley, so you can, you know, go to the, uh, and walk there. I will try if we can, but again, we will see if, uh, if we couldn't, uh, this is like some video, if we couldn't hear it because of the connection, maybe I'll just send it uh, in the chat and people can, um, can watch it. Yeah, I think it's better to to send it to you guys because uh, um, it's very nice. It talks about uh, the plantation. It talks about um, sorry. Okay, so chat. Okay, chat. Okay, so I'll, I'll just copy it and paste it here, and people can. Um, yeah, if if you if you want, you can just listen to it later because I know there is a problem uh, last time with the connection, so that would be good. So this is one of the beaches we went to and you know it's very open, very beautiful sand, very clean, you know people really take care of it and like this is like from this side, the other side is like full of people but just uh, they keep it clean and nice and this is another photo by my son so this is like a diamond head which is famous too because it's very high and people can go. So we went, we walked all the way to the top and from the top, there's a lot of nice scenery. We have other photos about that. And this is, yeah, like my daughter, like Hawaii 2020, because it was Christmas and New Year. So she took the photo. At the beach, we found coconut, just like, you know, fell from the tree. So that was cute. You know, it looked like an eye. At some point, like if you don't know what that is, it looks like a statue and an eye. So she thought that's creative. And yeah, so this is my presentation. We are 13 minutes. And um, if you have a question, so as I said, like I was I was hoping like I show you some videos about the tour in the doll plantation and uh, some of the um, Hula dance. So those are the two things I 
wish like the internet connection is better so we can all watch it. But if you have a chance, you can just Google hula dance and you know get an idea of the music. They have like Hawaiian music, which is very unique to the island, very peaceful, very joyful. So, so this is the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hazar, for your telling us about the story and about your experience. So it's really nice that you put your own pictures that you did or like did your family so that's really nice and I'm like i like the fact that like you can walk on the beach and like you can find the coconuts so that's so funny right thank you yeah okay so i guess we've got some questions mm -hmm. in the chat box okay Can you please uh, help me? I can't see the chat box for some reason. Can you? Okay. Yeah. And then uh, she asks us what type of things you were selling you can bring into Hawaii. Uh, again, what that, what is the question? What, what type of things you were selling you can bring into Hawaii? Ah, okay. Hawaii. Yeah. So actually, you cannot bring, uh, you know, this is also in the US, you cannot bring milk products or, uh, or meat, you cannot bring fruit to Hawaii, you cannot bring almost every, anything unless it's dried or cooked, because this food can have some kind of uh, uh, like diseases or something, like, you know, if, if the apple was infected, it will infect the whole island, you know, and they, it will affect the agriculture so they they do have this specific uh, rules so in reality we, we didn't bring anything other than like you know things in the box like snacks for the kids like something like biscuits or something like nuts but you know cooked but you cannot get things that they are fresh almost everything you cannot get food there and when you leave the island you cannot take anything from the island except fresh pineapples i think uh, coconut those are the two things that they can bring. And you know we have to Google it. So we Google what uh, things to get inside Hawaii. So, because we wanted to get more stuff, but we cannot, we couldn't. So yeah, they are very uh, protective of their island, which I totally understand. It's a very beautiful island and they want to keep it uh, nice and clean and protected. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Okay. So another question, is it common to hear people speaking Hawaiian in Hawaii? So That's do they use, yeah, do they use the, their own language a lot? So that's a very interesting uh, question. When we were there, we had friends there that they were originally from Hawaii, but we met them overseas and then they are stationed there. So they invited us for dinner and they invited a person who is actually a professor or at the university trying to preserve the languages of the island. So he said they have different languages. It's not only one. It's like they have maybe like variety, just like China. Like you have, you have the main language, the Hawaiian, but then, you know, each you know, group of people, they speak differently. So at some, at the beginning of, uh, at the beginning when they when Hawaii joined the US they tried to not speak you know enforce the English language because they want everybody to speak the same language and everybody you know to have you know to communicate better and they were having a lot of investors coming to the to the island because one of the main reasons uh, Hawaii joined is because of you know the industry because they were it was a wealthy uh, state so they wanted to make sure like English is spoken. But then recently, like the last 20 years, they started, you know, realizing how important the language of the people is very unique and it has the culture and you know, some of the languages are disappearing. And that was very uh, important for them to preserve the native languages. So like 20 years, they started introducing the Hawaiian language at school. So people are studying them at the university, they are doing that. So now people are more like, you know, proud of their language more, they are talking, you know, in their Hawaiian language. So yes, I heard it. So I heard it 
not very very common like everybody is you know of course like they're americans but when they go home or when they speak to each other like you know if they are the same group they will speak hawaiian and it's a very beautiful language so we learned a couple uh, words so I think it will be uh, nice if more people learn Hawaiian. Okay, so can you tell us some words? So, uh, you know, as I said, like aloha is, uh, is a very, uh, uh, you know, whatever you go, you said aloha. Uh, as thank you, you, um, um, you, you can, yeah, because, you know, we learned it, we wrote it, <laughs> we wrote it down, my, my, uh, my son is very like interested in languages, so like we were practicing there. But yeah, like now I the only ones I remember is um, I think aloha. <laughs> but yeah, like we learned a couple of words when we were there. Like I think thank you was uh, common. Yeah, I will I will Google it now. Yeah, like another question. So it's also ahana, right? It's like we know more about Hawaii from Little East Stitch. The cartoon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's. Have you watched nice. this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying to Google some basic Hawaiian words, but <laughs> <laughs> and you know it is uh, like yeah, like aloha uh, kakayaha means uh, like you know uh, good morning. So kakayaka is morning. So aloha kakayaha is uh, good morning. And then if you want to say uh, good afternoon, uh, aloha awinala. So like, you know, it's like they look the same because they don't have that many uh, letters, but yeah, aloha ayonala. Um, and then aloha ahi, um, ahihahi. So that is uh, also like uh, good evening. Um, one thing like Hawaii, uh, you know, I'm originally from Syria, so I speak Arabic and Hawaii, when we went there, they don't say Hawaii, they said Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. And Hawaii, exactly like how it's pronounced, it is an Arabic word, means uh, windy. And then we realized there's a lot of wind there. So when we had that dinner with the professor, so I asked him like, is Hawaii like an Arabic? I think it's an Arabic. And he said, yes, it is in fact. So because he was doing a study on the, on the language and he found like there's a lot of Arabic words uh, in Hawaiian language because they have a lot of Arab explorers coming to the islands and you know, in the old times, uh, at the beginning, so it integrated with the language. So this is actually why I was like thinking, oh, like I can speak some words, and you know, like when I hear them, I ask, is this this what this mean? And it's it's it, sometimes it does. So it's like in Kazakh, you have some Arabic that they are very uh, some Arabic words. So you know, like khabar, uh, you know, it's news in Arabic. It's the same, and you have. You know, so sometimes when I'm hearing Kazakh, I feel like there are some Arabic words, and sometimes it. It is so. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, okay. I have, I have a question. Uh, is there, uh, is there any volcano on Hawaii? Yes. So Hawaii, it, you know, it was active. This is why we were talking at the beginning. Uh, the land increases because you know when when they have the eruption, it will be bigger. You know, like they will have more. So they have, but uh, when we were there, like, you know, the place we were there, I, I think, I, I don't think it was recent, but it was uh, very active. And this is, you know, wh why the land is very rich also, because, uh, you know, after several years, it will be very good for plantation. Excuse me. Sure. I think if you uh, could turn off the demonstration of your screen, you could see the chat box because there is some questions in chat box. Thank you. Okay, let me see. Yeah, so I think it's not sharing, right? I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So if I stop sharing and then... Um, okay, let me close this up. Yeah, in the meanwhile, Afia, if you want to uh, give me another question, or if somebody has a question, please unmute yourself. Yes, and... so Anel also asked about the weather. So what is the hottest weather could be there? So when we were there, it was, 
it was Christmas, so we arrived mid December until uh, January. So it was beautiful. The weather was very nice and warm. It rained probably half of the time when we were there, but it was warm rain. It was very beautiful. It, we had like maybe two, three rainstorms, but it was nice. And then the water changes so much. Like they have a lot of rainbow. That's why they call it sometimes the rainbow. You know, we look at taxis and then we say, oh, look at the rainbow. And he said, oh, we have rainbows all the time. So because it rains and then after that, they will have the, the sun will come out. And you know, in the morning it will be cloudy, but then it gets sunny during the noon, and then the afternoon it will rain, and then it will come sunny again. So it's very changeable weather, but it's very beautiful. It's very humid, and it's warm. The water we swam, but the water was not warm like in Dubai. It was it was a little bit chilly, but you know, compared coming from Kazakhstan because we were living in Kazakhstan, we thought, oh, this is like summer, you know. So it gets uh, hotter. So, when, you know, our friends told us like in the summer it's hot, but still there is some breeze because as we said, Hawaii means windy. So it's all the time there's wind. And when there's wind, the weather will be cooler. So it gets hot in, during the day in the summer, but then in the morning it's windy and cool. In the afternoon it gets, uh, you know, cool. And Hawaii is, tourism is uh, popular all year round. So people go there all year round. But uh, probably in the winter they go more because, you know, it's not that humid and not that hot. And people are coming from cold places, so they, they like to have change. Um, I have a question to ask. Um, yes. Are there any uh, dangerous sea animals like jellyfishes, you know, and, yeah, and sharks? So there, there, when we were swimming, some of the places when there's wind, they will have the sign that like, be, be aware of jellyfish. So they said, okay, like, you know, that's part of the, sh the beach, don't go because there's jellyfish. Well, after two days, they put the sign in a different place, but that place was okay. So I think they have some waves of jellyfish, but you know, jellyfish, yeah, you know, it's not that dangerous. Like people get burned, of course, but uh, it's not like, you know, sharks. Um, I don't know about sharks. You know, I don't want to give you the wrong information, but it's not like, um, I think Florida, maybe they have more sharks than Hawaii. But again, I'm not going to give you wrong information. But when we were there, we didn't have any fe fear of anything. We didn't, like, they don't have crocodiles. Like in California, they have crocodiles. Like, you know, that is, uh, you know, danger animal, but uh, I don't think we experienced that fear like, oh, there are sharks. I think, um, you know, as a tourist, we enjoyed it, but definitely, you know, it is, uh, it's like uh, the ocean. So they must have all the animals if you go inside, but I don't think it will, you know, pose a threat to the places where people and tourists visit. And thank you for your question. Uh, right. also thank you. I also wanted to ask a question about yeah. sea habitants. So when you uh, swam on the public beaches, could you see uh, some fishes in the sea? Yes, definitely. It was very easy for us to see the fish because it's very clear water. And, and actually, you know, some, they have different beaches. Like Waikiki is very famous. It's very touristy. And you know, we were, it, we were renting an apartment close to Waikiki, like 10 minute walk. And you have people like crowded there, but it is very calm water. And it's still like with all the people, it's still nice. And if you go a little bit, you know, deeper, you can see the, the fish, but they have other beaches away from the tourist place. And that, you know, in, in, in those places, you can see the fish clear and it is very nice and it's very serene, like, you know, it's beautiful. Uh, I know that the very popular, uh, popular sport there is surfing because as we said, it's very windy. So they have, they have a lot of uh, waves. And this is why surfing is a big thing. And actually my son wanted to learn surfing. So we got, you know, the small one, just like for him to practice. And, you know, after a couple of days, they enjoyed it. And it is nice. Like they, they go all the way and then, you know, the wave will bring them back. So because of the waves, 
sometimes, you know, it's, you know, as we said, it depends on the beach. Some beaches are calm, you can see more, you know, that like Naula, Naula Beach that I showed you, you can, you can clearly see a lot of fish. Some of them are very unique to Hawaii, you know, so, so some, some of them are like you can see everywhere, but uh, it's very rich in the, uh, you know, sea animals and fish. Thank you very much. And I had two more questions. Please, yes. Yeah, so what popular colleges or universities in Hawaii you can name if you know some? Actually, we had people that they were with us in Kazakhstan that she went to a college in Hawaii. So, uh, so actually, you know, I, I, I know, and even like our friends, they were... Uh, uh, in Hawaii. Okay, I don't know, but I will uh, check it, Hawaii University. But uh, yeah, there is a lot of information. Like we were there, okay, University of Hawaii. Um, I'm just like thinking what is the... So, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I can't see like now, my, okay. So I think they have, you know, universities you know, different universities, they said like nine famous ones, but uh, some of them probably are going to be, I imagine, but I think maybe I heard also, like they will be studying uh, the sea and studying the, uh, the animals of the, and maybe, yeah, maybe like the volcano. Okay, yeah, yeah, one thing is actually is I wouldn't, when I was there, because of the location of the island, it's like in, in the unique place, the sky is so clear at night that astron as, uh, astronomy is, you know, very popular. Like even our friends, they had this like telescope, you can see the, the, the stars. So this is actually one of the important things people study there. Uh, they study, you know, astronomy and uh, they study uh, the sea and the geology. You know, they, they have everything, of course, the universities, but I think those are big things because of the unique uh, play, you know, features of the islands and the location. Thank you very much. And um, the last question from me, you probably don't know, uh, could you study there for free if you can speak Hawaiian? Wow. I don't know, <laughs> but I don't know. But as I said, like there is, there is that effort to encourage people to speak Hawaiian. I don't think there is something called free education in the US or in Europe. Uh, in Europe, in some places, like in Germany, they do have uh, cheaper, you know, I did um, masters in Germany and compared to other places, it's just like very cheap. But I think in the US, there is not, uh, you know, like free education, like after we have free education when the kids are at school, like from the first grade to high, high school, but after that college is expensive, people need to pay for it. So they, Hawaii is part of the US, so I cannot imagine things would be free, but definitely there are some programs, maybe uh, there are scholarships and it depends, you know, what kind of uh, applicants they have and what do they need, but I don't think it would be free. Yes, you know. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Sorry, um, I hope I, I answered your question, but of course, you know, um, you know, we can get more information if we go online. But uh, yeah, for me, I don't have uh, more than the answers. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you anyway. It thank was you. interesting. Thank you, thank okay, you for anyone else? Thank you for the question. Anyone else? Um, is uh, is Hawaii on lockdown due outbreak? Uh, again, the question, please. Uh, is Hawaii on lockdown due, out, due oh, outbreak? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. You know, when we were there, we went to the dentist because we have to go to the dentist. We were there for a long time. We are so we went to the dentist, and now they keep like uh, that was interesting because. We didn't know that now we gave them our uh, phone number when we were there, which is the same that we're using here, and our uh, email. And from the very beginning of the pandemic, they were calling us. They said, oh, sorry, if you know we are closed, we can't get uh, uh, appointments for people, please be safe. So they were 
updating us. They have the same uh, regulations. They were trying to limit, uh, um, you know, this, you know, enforce social distance, limit uh, big gathering, and probably, you know, they did not want people to come to Hawaii because it's small. Like, you know, if somebody gets sick, everybody will get sick, and then it will disappear because. As we said, the population is not that many and, uh, you know, because of the isolation, because people are isolated in, on that island, they don't have the immunity system that other people who are traveling a lot and they have different, uh, you know, people, you know, when, when you have a lot of people, you get more immunity on the long run. So for them, it is a threat to have any disease because it can swipe them out. So they do have. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Mike also asked, uh, what souvenirs did you bring back from uh, Hawaii? So we brought back some candies, <laughs> you know, like packaged food. Um, we, we brought some souvenirs, like, you know, you know the children wanted uh, some wooden things, like made in Hawaii in the, the shape of pineapples. Um, we, yeah, we didn't bring a pineapple. We saw people are bringing pineapples, but we didn't bring, you know, my son had some energy, which we didn't know until later, but we were eating a pineapple every day because it was so fresh and big and delicious. But then after three days, he got allergy. So we continued eating, but he stopped. And then, you know, we thought, okay, we're not bringing home. But we had, uh, yeah, like mainly they have that kind of dessert, like chocolate with uh, pineapple inside. So we, we brought those, like very special about uh, Hawaii. Oh, nice. So it means their uh, pineapples are different there, like comparing to other states, All right? I, I think they, in, they export pineapples all over the states. Like, you know, in Kazakhstan, if you get, Hawaii, if you get uh, pineapples, you may get pineapples from Hawaii. You can see, like, if it is dull, that means from Hawaii. And here the same, like, so they export it. It is a, a big industry thing. Like, people were, were coming on the plane with boxes of pineapple, you know, and I was thinking, yeah, but you can buy it also from here. So it was not very cheap because, um, it's also like a tourist place, right? So uh, it is the same price almost if you're buying it from there or from other place. So I was thinking, yeah, we can buy from other place, but sometimes it's not available in the other place. So that's why you have to bring. But yeah, it's delicious. Okay, nice. So uh, I'm sorry. So Mike also asked, like talking about prices, uh, he asked us, uh, is it expensive in Hawaii? Yes. It's very expensive in Hawaii. I, it was actually like the meal, let's say if you pay some $5 for something, you pay their $8. So there is, there, because they import everything, it's an island. So everything is expensive. Like, yeah, like something we got too. Like I got a shirt, like we have Hawaiian shirts, like for the whole family, so we can look the same. And uh, these shirts were like $25 each. And usually you can buy them for $12, like almost double the price. So everything was expensive uh, because of that, you know, additional tax because they import them. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Um, does Hawaii have a wide range of exact, exotic fruits? Um, like if I have a friend and he, he's vegan, uh, could he uh, live in Hawaii uh, like a convenient life? Uh, so there are a lot of exotic fruits actually. We saw when we were on the doll plantation, like the pineapple plantation, uh, there are some trees. Like when we went there, they show you when you are on the train. You know, I sent the link, and you know, if you can uh, see the link, like the tour, you can see how it's a, a huge big land, the plantation. They plant avocado, they plant a lot, they plant a lot of uh, different uh, fruit and vegetables. So it is, uh, it is very, very, uh, uh, no, it's very rich land. And as we said, because of the volcano, so they can plant more and more. As we said, it, it plants coffee. So I think he will enjoy it there. But as we said, it's expensive. But again, if you are working there, of course, you are earning more than when you are working in a place. So if you're working there, I think you're fine. But if you're coming to visit, 
you know, whatever you're earning before, you know, it will be more expensive than whatever you're coming from. Um, have, have you ever tried uh, to do surfing, like on the waves? I did, but you know, I don't consider it surfing <laughs> because we were just practicing right. me and my kids, so we we're trying. Um, it is interesting, you know, it needs a lot of skills. I think it's very good. It's like ice skating or skiing. It's almost like skiing. You need to have the balance. You have to figure out the balance. Instead of you are balancing your feet, your body on your feet, now you are you're balancing on the water. So it's like not solid, but again, you know, and you have to, to know the time. You have to time it. Like you see the wave is coming and you have to figure out after so many attempts, like, okay, when the, when the wave is coming, then when it is that close, I can just like jump in. So, you know, some people, you know, for me, I didn't stand on, on it. I just like was trying to you know, float on it, but like get it in the right time with the right position to go all the way to the shore, which was, you know, successful after like maybe what, 50 times, I was successful three times. <laughs> but you know, we were like practicing. So it was fun. And then the kids, like they never had this experience before. So the first couple of days, we didn't, we didn't buy the surf because we are on vacation. We're not going to take it back. Like, why do we need that? But then when they were looking and they see it and we said, okay, let's try it. So we got one and then we were fighting over it. So it was like really like it was good. Like everybody was taking turns and we had good time. Yeah, I think my yeah. son would like to do surfing, you know, if it's possible. But again, you need the right beach. You need, you know, waves, high waves. And then they have some beaches, the waves are very, very high. So it's actually for professionals. You can't do that. It's like the wave, like one wave actually they took us and, you know, my son got hit on his head because, you know, he went all the way down. My daughter was hit there. So we, did, we didn't go there another time. We only went once. There's another beach, like middle wave. So, so you can change. So I think it's a big uh, um, surf uh, place, surfing place. Uh, one of the taxis we took, he was a big surfer and he was like, you know, we took a taxi for maybe like 20 minutes. So he told us about all his life story and he showed us photos. He has photos like when he started, he was like one of the big surfer. And uh, it was amazing, mm -hmm. like, you know, what that uh, little land, like it's like an island. It, but they have, they bring people from all, all over the world to do surfing. And as we said, like, you know, snorkeling and scuba diving so it is very rich in in what it can afford for a small place wow. wow thank you uh it was that was really informative thank you very much i appreciate your participation and all the questions thank you oh yeah so now i'd like to try it <laughs> you know where <laughs> it sounds pretty hard Okay, and but Diana, you, never, you never know, you may like it. <laughs> where it's expensive to go to Hawaii, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, it is expensive. We were very lucky that, uh, you know, we, you know, we work in, in, in a good uh, place, you know, as I said, like we work for the embassy. So we were able, you know, to afford that. But again, we, we tried not, we could spend more than what we spent. So what we did is instead of staying in high in, in a five star hotel and pay like $500 a night, what we did is we rented an apartment. So apartments and it is a little bit far from the tourist place. Like we walked 10 minutes instead of walking two minutes to the beach, but that was fine with us. And we were like four people. So we were able to get like a small apartment so it was cheaper. It was way much cheaper, like, you know, than being in a hotel. We stayed in a hotel only two days when we arrived just like to recover and be close to the tourist place. And then we moved to have the rest, like we had two weeks, a little bit more. So it was, uh, we tried not to spend a lot. Like we could, you can spend a lot anywhere. There is a very interesting program. It is like Russian program, I think. They talked about, uh, you know, two people, they tried uh, to go to the same place. And one of them, uh, sorry, one of them will be spending, they will have limited amount of money, limited fund. And the other person he has only like $1, $100 a day. 
and you can see the experience. So they go to different places. They go to Dubai, they go to the US, they go to France, you know, they go to so many places and they can show you, you can actually be in Paris and spend only $100 a day. And then you can be in Paris again and spend like a thousand dollars a day. So yeah, you, you can do both. You know, if you really like to go to this place, you can, you can Google, we rented the place three months in advance to get a good deal. Um, you can cook, you know, when you are having an apartment, you can cook your breakfast and dinner instead of eating three meals outside, you can eat only one meal outside. So you can save money if you think uh, differently, like if you're only going there to just like uh, be there and having more time instead of just like trying all the tourist things. Okay. Thank you. Um, it may be a silly question, but no. uh, is it uh, uh, is uh, skateboarding culture uh, popular among the teenagers uh, in Hawaii? It's popular with in with everybody, you know, because when we were there, like little kids and bigger kids, and like I I, I saw a woman, she's probably sixty something, and you know she came, wow. you know. She, she came every day when we were there. So I think she was local because she looks like she lives there. You can see like, you know, her body is very tan. She came and she did, you know, that like for what, half an hour, she was surfing and then she came back. This is part of her day, like going for a walk for her. So it's very, very popular. Among okay. all ages. That's so interesting. Okay, so talking about this, Diana actually asked us, uh, do you know what people do there? So probably she means that what people usually do. Yes. Like, like what's yes. usual life look like? So they have everything, you know, like it's normal life. You, they have different sectors. So you have, you can work with the government, you can work with the school. It's like every place, but then they have the tourist, uh, the, the tourism is a big thing. So. Some people, they may work more in the tourist sector, like there is more opportunity to work with tourists. You can be tourist guide, you can work with museums, you can work with, uh, you know, restaurants and hotels. You know, hotels are very, very, like a lot of hotels and they're different levels. You have very expensive hotels and you have medium and you have cheap hotels. And some people, they do investment like their house, they rent it, you know, during part of the year or like all year round, they have investment properties. So it is like every place, but tourism is a big thing. As we said, tourism, surfing, they, they host a lot of events too. So, so yeah, like uh, re people, like regular people, they live uh, also, they depend on what their career is, but uh, yeah, there is uh, the normal life there too. Okay, so probably we can ask, answer, sorry, answer a couple more questions, right? Sure. So, anyone wants to ask something else? Um, are there any traditional, like really traditional meal uh, in Hawaii? Like, what uh, do people usually eat uh, like in Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Yes, so they have a famous like Hawaii grill. So they go, you know, this is like a uh, famous, but again, we didn't do it, it's expensive. Like, I think it's almost like $150 for each of us to go to that one hour or like two hour show, which includes food too. So we didn't do it, but uh, it is, I, I think, you know, I wish we did that because it's once in a lifetime. But anyway, they will have different kinds of grills. So they grill everything like beef, pork, uh, uh, chicken, and again, like usually those because they, you know, they grow them also like the chicken, but the beef and pork probably they import them. So they are expensive. That's why they're expensive. And they have uh, a lot of fruit and vegetables. As we said, like um, they grill banana, um, uh, pineapples and they have bananas and they have uh, coconuts. So and they have all this kind of like uh, exotic uh, fruits. So uh, yeah, I think the traditional, and then they have, okay, so, so the grill is a big thing, like Hawaiian grill usually is uh, uh, famous, they grill it with the uh, fruits and uh, vegetables, and they have the uh, different kinds of uh, meals, let's say one of the common things, which was, I was surprised, was the macaroni cheese. So macaroni cheese usually is American, but for them, they add more things, so it's unique to Hawaii, 
it's actually thicker. Like the macaroni cheese we make it in the US usually is, you know, the macaroni and like uh, we have like the cheese sauce. For them, they add to the cheese sauce more of uh, mayonnaise and they have like, like more flavor to it. So, and very mm. thick. So that will be uh, Hawaiian uh, macaroni cheese. Um, sweet potatoes is also Hawaiian, you know, like when you were there, like, okay, like Hawaiian thing, sweet potato dish. Uh, they have another dish, uh, yeah, um, like we had many times in the restaurants and it is like very Hawaiian. And, and basically it's just like meat with uh, spices and some like, uh, it's interesting, you know, Mm-hmm. It, it's not my favorite, but it's good to try it because it's very heavy. For me, it was very heavy, you know, um, but we like it. You know, I, I prefer Mexican food because, you know, the spices of it is more, they don't have that much spices, you know, in Hawaii. Like they don't put spices in, in the food. So it's a little bit plain and it's a little bit like thick and heavy. So, but it's, you know, and that's why probably the people in Hawaii are a little bit bigger because the food they eat is very, very rich. Mm. Um, uh, what about um, internet connection? Uh, is it good in Hawaii? In Hawaii, yes, definitely, because as we said, it's tourists and business and uh, right, support, yeah. so they need uh, to have a good connection. And as we said, it's part of the U.S., so they have all the services too. Okay. Any questions? More questions? Azar? Yes. I just wanted to say thank you very much for that presentation. I learned a lot today about Hawaii, uh, things that I didn't know about before. Thank you. Thank you very much, Faira. I really appreciate a lot you know, you're joining us today. Yeah, and uh, you know, what was interesting is that uh, when you showed the monument and it had the ship underneath it, I didn't realize the ship was there because I've seen, I seen the monument so many times and Mike actually was there um, a long time ago. And he brought pictures back, but then I never realized that the ship was right underneath it. And even if he told me, it didn't, it didn't maybe sink in. And when you show the picture from above, where you can actually see the ship underneath it, I thought that was pretty nifty. So that was a good, uh, a good slide. Thank you. Me. Yeah, it, we, we spent a lot of time there because they have the museum and the kids wants to learn everything. And the museum was very, very good. They have some videos, they have some interactive uh, games so you can play and learn more. And uh, we wanted to do the ship, you know, it was part of the whole, like the um, uh, cruise, you go on the little uh, boat and you, you get it. So it was very, very special and it was very, uh, like full of information. So some photos I took, I think one photo I took from a poster, which made me think differently. If I didn't see the poster, I, I would not understand exactly what. So the poster you know, helped me to see better. So they, they did a good job in explaining. Thank you. Thank you for joining. And I, I'm happy you had a good time. <laughs> Thank you. And the other thing that I was gonna bring to your attention. So you said that the dull pineapples, then maybe we get some over here. But I don't think that's the case because everything I heard uh, about the pineapples here in the Sultan is that they're not sweet at all. So mm-hmm. I don't think they come from, uh, from uh, Hawaii, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, the Sultan has a lot of good vegetables and fruits and um, they have, uh, I think the soil is very rich here in, uh, in Kazakhstan and mm-hmm. the tomatoes are so delicious. Like I never enjoy a tomato salad um, tomato cucumber salad as much as I do now because the tomatoes are so good and uh, what's the other one the potatoes the potatoes is another vegetable that we really love over here but sorry I didn't mean to digress from Hawaii no no I agree I I miss I miss that you know as I said we uh you know I'm now in the U.S. but we were in Kazakhstan I enjoyed a lot of the fruits and especially like during the summer like the fresh fruits and vegetables everything was delicious I totally you know miss that and agree and about how um, pineapples, uh, Myra, we, I, I think I took some video I put on my uh, Facebook, which I wanted to share, but I don't think, you know, that connection will allow us to do that. So one of the things they talked about on the tour, on that little train, they said the first uh, pineapples uh, they brought to, it was not on the internet, but it was on that tour, which is, I believe it's true. 
the first pineapple was brought to Hawaii was from Mexico. Oh. So, so that was the origin. <laughs> So that was the origin of all the, you know, dull plantation and, you know, good uh, pineapples. As you said, like, they chose the best and they have really the best uh, pineapples. So it was all coming from Mexico. Hey, there you go. And I better uh, information that I didn't know about. Yeah, yeah. So I, I took a video to, to show you. This one, when I put it on my Facebook, I thought you, you clicked it on it. So because, you know, I know you're from Mexico and you would be happy to know, like, okay, that's the origin of the pineapples in Hawaii. And then I think Hawaii, like, um, if, you, if you see the dog plantation uh, video, I think they, maybe like 30 or 40% of the pineapples in the world comes from dog plantation. So it's a big, big yeah. Well, thank you so much, Hassar. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Marita. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And I really appreciate all the questions. Uh, it was really, you know, interactive. Usually, I prefer a lot, and we don't have a lot of time to hear everyone. So I think this time it was perfect. You know, I tried to not say much in the presentation, but I think from your questions, we said more than what, you know, I was uh, thinking I can say. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. If there are no questions, so we probably can close the meeting. Yeah, thank you, Haldar, again for. Thank you. Thank you, but, Akia. Yeah. Thank you very much, Janar. Thank you, everybody, Mark and uh, Joe and uh, all, like uh, all the participants, all the questions. Yes. I, yeah, that was really nice to hear about your experience. Okay, and I want to mention that we had the feedback form, and I asked everybody, please, could you please complete this form? It will be really useful for us. It will probably take about five minutes maximum to fill it out. And okay, and so guys, follow the news of American foreigners on Instagram and on Facebook. And next, and, okay. and next week, uh, Thursday, we have Mike. So Mike Thornton will talk about Arizona. And I am very excited to hear about Arizona and learn more. It's a beautiful state. Yeah, it will be nice to hear. Thank you. <laughs> OK. OK, so bye, everyone. Bye, Hazard. Thank you again. See you Thank soon. You. See you. Stay bye, healthy. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Bye, bye.